Hey folks, so the GTX 970 has been a great card for me so far. Picked up cheap on eBay in near mint condition for the same price as a low-end GTX 1050 Ti. It's taken pretty much everything I've thrown at it in its stride, from shrugging off the challenge from the true 4GB 1050 Ti, to standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with AMD's latest mid-range darling, the RX 570. The only real shortcoming, well apart from that half gig that we're not going to talk about, seems to have been well, me, or in particular my somewhat poor overclocking of the card. Now, it should be noted that although a lot of you watching this video probably do overclock your hardware, those that actually overclock components are still in the vast minority when it comes to PC gaming. I know, I know, it might seem strange that 99% of the people throw away free performance in order to run stock clocks, but that's basically the reality of the market. So with that preamble out of the way, what was actually wrong with my overclock in the 970? Well, the card has two clock speeds, a base and a boost. In standard MSI gaming form, the base clock sits around 1.11 GHz, whereas the boost clock will ramp up to 1.25 when the temperatures allow. In my comparison video with the 970 and the 570, I had stated that I had upped the boost of the 970 to 1.25 GHz. And this was met with a lot of comments about the GTX 970's ability to hit 1.5 GHz. So am I missing 250 MHz of performance? Well, not quite. I probably should have been clearer in stating that it was my base clock that was overclocked to 1.25 GHz. The card actually boosted to just below 1.4 GHz. But as stated, there was headroom there to get even more performance out of the card. Now we all know by now that the GTX 970 is a 28nm card, with 1664 shading units, 104 TMUs and 56 ROPs. And its 4GB of GDDR5 is running at effective speed out of the box at about 7GHz. So the first port of call would be to overclock the memory further. Like the core, the VRAM on the GTX 970 is nicely overclockable. Taking the card from its effective speed of 7 GHz to a stable speed of 7.8 GHz, that's about 11% faster than stock, was as simple as moving a slider in MSI Afterburner, and this upped the bandwidth from 224 gigabits per second up to 249. Secondly, I thought I'd push that 1.25 GHz base clock and the just sub 1.4 GHz boost clock up higher too, and in the end after fiddling around with fan curves and setting up a more aggressive case fan profile to draw in more cool air and exhaust the heat, a stable overclock of 1.3 GHz on the base was achieved and a boost of 1.45 GHz. Not a massive amount over what I previously set as my custom overclock for day to day use, but it is certainly faster, although it should be noted that in this configuration it is considerably noisier and warmer. But over stock, these figures represent about a 17% increase in base clock frequency and a 15% increase on the boost speed. So what do these increases in the clock speeds actually mean in games? Well, let's run through the games I've previously tested and find out. Each test consisted of multiple run-throughs of either the previously used canned benchmarks or the in-game test sections, and the average FPS and average minimums were recorded. So let's first jump into Rise of the Tomb Raider, and as you can see from the graph, over the stock clocked reference GTX 970 and my MSI base clock variant, we're getting about 7 FPS higher on average with this maximum overclock. The minimums also have increased by about 5 FPS, which is pretty good, and that's representing just over 10% increase in frame rates on both the averages and the minimums. Crisis 3 now and we're getting 98 FPS on average, which is quite frankly excellent. The increase we see to the average minimums is slightly less, we jump up from 61, 62 up to 64, but it's always great to get a little bit of headroom above that 60 FPS when it comes to the average minimums. Moving on to Far Cry Primal, and we've finally managed to get an average frame rate that is above 60 FPS with 62. The average minimums also increased by 4 FPS over the stock clocked MSI GTX 970 and averaged out at 47. A really good showing for what has proven over the last few weeks to be a pretty intensive benchmark. The canned Hitman benchmark was rerun and we've finally been able to crack 70 FPS on average, and we're getting dangerously close to 50 FPS on the average minimums. Now while it still can't match AMD's offering in DirectX 12 titles, 
The difference from a reference GTX 970 up to this overclocked variant is over 10%. Jumping back into the campaign of Battlefield 1, and we see our frame rates career well above 80 FPS on average, and the average minimums here finally managed to crack that 60 FPS mark. Now, while it's true, you're probably not going to see that much difference between 59 and 61 FPS, the fact that it does crack it is just going to help add to the smoothness of the gameplay. Now, on to Doom, can it finally take the AMD RX crown? No, it can't take that, but we still see a healthy increase up to 108 FPS on average, with the average minimums hitting 80 FPS. So what do I think of these maximum overclock values? Well, I'm sure there's some people out there that's going to get even higher overclocks, but for me, well, to be honest with you, I'm quite happy with the clock speeds that it was set at in the previous video. While it is nice to eke out that extra few FPS for bragging rights, there is something to be said for having a rig that is fast as well as quiet and cool. And if you think of it a bit like a triangle, like most things, if you start pushing towards one of those corners, you're going to start taking away from the other two. And this was certainly the case here. Yes, the frame rates did increase considerably in some cases, but it was noticeably noisier, with all three of my case fans kicking into much higher RPMs to try and get that hot air out of the case. But it is great fun to tinker about with this card, and the fact that it is so overclockable means that if you get enjoyment out of tinkering, the GTX 970 is a card that you're going to absolutely love. As I've shown in my past few videos, the GTX 970 it's still well worth considering, even now in 2017. Its performance is high, it can be found for relatively cheaply if you know where to look, especially on the used market. And I think it's actually got a good down in history as one of those legendary cards. Hopefully it's for the right reasons though and not that missing half a gigabyte. But I think we'll leave the GTX 970 there for one day. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, you can use those thumbs. If you've got any suggestions, you can leave them down below. As always, take care and I'll see you in the comment section down below and in the next video.